Hey everybody, welcome back for another episode of the Pull Box Pals with your pals Monk and your other pal me, that is Mad. Uh how you doing, man? You threw him through a zinger there. You threw you introduced me first. Who's it's it's a wild west out there. It is the yeah. interweb. Yeah. You got your you brought the brisk back. I did. Um that's brisk baby. That's comic baby. <laughs> Season one. Go back and watch those episodes. <laughs> uh oh and you're popping something open wow do you remember yeah. those early days a year ago boyo buoy cream buoy creek ah buoy yeah oh i thought you good. said buoy creek i thought that's i think that's a place um yeah. wow no but no, no. Bo- buoy buoy beer co it's up in astoria astoria yeah. I barely know you. Oh boy! Wow. Also, Ooh. also, Astoria has my favorite fish and chips uh, that you can get this side of the Mississippi. I, I don't know. say this <laughs> side of like two oceans and Who and fish all and, and chips and, in America. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you coastal elite. Yeah, <laughs> we only eat I, deer meat and bear meat here. Oh yeah, oh, no. I feel like a I make of, a lot of regi- uh, regional jokes. You do. It's, you I do. do. And that's good. It's fine. I love my. I enjoy hometown. them. I'm proud of being a uh, bumpkin. Now, but, uh, remind me, are you like you're back in like your like you live in that town you grew up in or did you grow up in like a smaller town outside? I live town? like a stone's throw away from the town I went to high school in. But I did the first show like music show I ever played was technically in this town. Oh, OK, yeah. But I'm also of the mind that like you get to pick what your home is. That's fair. Like what like what you because I mean, like I grew up. I grew up in Nampa, Idaho, but Nampa. I tell people I tell people I'm from my from Boise. Mm-hmm. It's, That's where it's I knew tw- you from. You yeah, lied to me all these years. Who are you? Is your name even really Mark? Yeah, but I mean, when I gra- when I finished high school, I moved I moved to Boise and I was in Boise until I, I should have I, I should have so. said what have you been lying to me? Is your name not really mad? Ah, I had no. an actual good joke. Ah, no, no. Is it, it's actually it's just my initials. Oh, you tricked everybody or you revealed yeah. it to everybody. But hey, friend, or uh, did you did, did you want me to get into when I pulled this week? Absolutely. Tell me what uh, have you pulled? So this first one, I I, I can't I feel like you read it. I, you, you're going to have to remind me Reddit? first Reddit. Did you ever go on Reddit? Oh, never. Never. <laughs> no, Good. that's every every, every every once in a while. If I'm like trying to like learn something and like the Reddit thing pops up first, I'm like, okay, I'll see. I'll uh, see I mean, that's fair. Say. I do when I'm trying to like solve anything, I pretty much will Google it and then put Reddit because I know it's just human beings and not because it's like if you're going on a weird chat forum, who are those people? I don't trust any of those people. And if you're yeah. somebody who listens to this and goes on those weird chat for like the like a like the HP laptop website where you're like, you know, you're making an account there and typing things out. I'm like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Who are those people? You know? Yeah. I can't trust them, but I trust them. I don't trust yeah. them as much as I trust people on Reddit, which seems like a terrible <laughs> idea. Uh, let's see. Th- <laughs> things things Reddit's helped me with. Uh, fixing cars. There you go. That's uh, important. I, th- I think like one. I think fixing yeah, like gar- like garden tools too okay too like things like that uh yeah. like also like drills and hand drills. saws yeah there you go uh youtube i feel like has helped me a lot with uh drills and saws because i'm a, yeah. a very visual learner so i like to just see how the bits go together because i'm like well, very untrained monkeys and when it comes to uh tools of any sort which is a shame because yeah. i've been a maintenance man for many a year <laughs> I also I also should say that like I still use YouTube for a lot and pretty much all those same things. Yeah. Like sometimes I need the visual, but I also okay. Do you remember when we were studying Chinese? Ah, Dway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, uh, yeah, kind. Of, uh, yeah, it so, means a form of yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you, you know all those like learning tests that you've probably taken. I know we took a couple like during during our like time in Taiwan. Sure. But, like oh, like what's your best learning? Uh, yeah style or whatever yeah, yeah yeah so mine every like never failed if it was like three topics i got like 33 percent in two of them and 34 in the other <laughs> and if it was four topics like i got 25 percent or like variations of like wow like that's within a weird 
skew. And so when it comes to me, like having to like learn things, I don't just have to do it like auditorily and, or like visually or like reading. Uh, I also like, I don't know. I, I see like when we study Chinese, I had to like color code, like nouns versus verbs on sure. my like, study card. Like, hey, there's nothing wrong with figuring out how you learn. And I feel yeah. like you can take as many tests as you want. But the reality is until you start trying to learn how to do a thing, you're not yeah. going to learn how you do it best. And this is why mm -hmm. failure is important, right? Because you don't know what you're good at until you fail at some stuff. You don't know yeah. how you learn until you try to take a test in Chinese and you just you fumble it and you say a bunch of really stupid stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to think of something thing. that I've said stupid in a Chinese test, but I can't um nothing that's like like hilarious you know like like i just missed some words or anything I'm i could sorry. never get i could never get the proper pronunciation between pig and god uh shun one and it, jew no, is it? oh no, jew and jew yeah, yeah so it's a tonal difference there yeah yeah uh it's lord uh by the way yeah, yeah. jew e jew is lord of lords so there you go i know that in chinese if that'll be very useful for me, never. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so all right, let's talk about some comics because we started to go down. I've mentioned we did, this, we did, and, we uh, started. You misheard me, but uh, anyways, uh, Hairball number two. Did you ever? Oh yeah. yeah. Did, did you read number I did, one? I did not pick up number one. Okay, I was trying to think. I guess it would probably be the the guys over at the uh, comic book lair. Yeah, uh, the uh, our pals over at the lair there. At least one yeah. of them's reading it, and I, yeah. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that our uh, our pal Storytime Ross is as well. Good old Ross Storytime, whatever his last name is, I like it. Um, especially because I feel I always picture him in a leather jacket because I watched a video of him one time and he's in a leather jacket. And I'm like, that's a cool thing to do. You gave me a leather jacket one time. I you did, know yeah. would be a a cool place to wear a leather jacket would be at this uh, hellhole, this farm, and I hate this place. This is uh, <laughs> number eight. Man, and this is I ongoing. Didn't, I did not think that it was. I don't know. I, I, I kind of think when I first started out, I thought it was just gonna be like a five issue thing. Yeah, I, I, I think I knew it was ongoing, but I don't think I was gonna like. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I do. It's very. Mm -hmm. It came out around the same time as Slumber, and oh, Slumber right. was. Uh, they were like similar. They kind of like were on the same boat or like rocking the same waves of just like i'm enjoying this but it's not like my favorite it's doing it but it's it's okay um but then slumber kind of fell off at the end and this one is kept strong so i'm i'm happy i know slumber is going to come back and i'm excited for that um but yeah I've, i'm happy that this <laughs> is back and and going oh did i miss a comment yeah oh um, ross, ross, ross is actually on the same page as me with that it's like i i can't i yeah let's Ross said, I'm not reading it, but I contemplated picking it up, but I am reading. I hate this place. Um, but yeah, with with uh, Hairball, contemplated reading it. And I don't know. You're it's reading good. it. And it feels like a A24 comic. Like, hmm. like that's kind of just like that eeriness. And you're like, somebody's going to say something profound. Not profound, but like, I'm going to feel something at the end of this, you know? Yeah. Um, and not that like, it's just it's very creepy. It's like it's unsettling. And I think that that's what a lot of those movies kind of set out to be, you know. And Ro Ross, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. hanging out, pal. Um, actually, that reminds me, this is a perfect time to bring that up. Uh, and also just to let you know, Mad, because we, I'd, I'd message you about this before. But Ross mm -hmm. and I are going to do a uh, little one on one session uh, yeah, yeah. Friday night, late, like around 9 30, 10, somewhere in that area. Um, and we're going to just be, be talking 6 30 about... for me. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. We're going to be talking about know your station. So that wrapped oh, up. And, awesome. Um, we didn't really get to talk about that much on here or really on the comic book layer when we were on it. And it felt like something that, uh, yeah, we could really die, like actually have like a good conversation about. And I was I really enjoy talking with Ross. So it'll be yeah. a lot of fun. And he yeah. says, yeah, dudes. Um, I also predict it's going to be a very like ASMR episode because we're both going to be like <laughs> our partners are going to be asleep and we're going to be like, yes. And then when the station said this, you know, um, yeah. kind of going to that. Uh, but yeah, so tune well, in for that. That'll be I'm going to see if you guys uh, convince me because I, I have the first two issues, but didn't get the rest. Oh, what a uh, 
I'm sure I'm sure Ross will be able to convince you mm -hmm. um, just because I feel like he could probably do that with any book. Um, <laughs> but yeah, maybe he can do it with. Tell me if you've heard of this one. Mono myth. So um, really wanted to pick that up. My shop didn't get it. And it's I from didn't mad cave. Yeah. What else was from mad cave? I feel like I've I've asked this before. I recently got something from mad cave. I think it's hunt, hunt, kill, repeat. Okay, that sounds like it. But look at this art, man. I'm so in on this art. Oh my um, god. It's it's very like just it's uh yeah. This one guy looks as like Rick from the Walking Dead. Um mm. but yeah, it's just <laughs> it's it's great art. I have no idea what it's about. Um uh yeah, I picked it up on a whim. So give it a you know, I'll let you know what I think about it in yeah. a week's time. Or I, I won't say I, anything about I it. I may I may end up ordering it because I that was one thing I really wanted to get and I didn't. Yeah, I don't even know the details, but so uh, here's something I, I know you got. Actually, you know what? I'm going to wait because I feel like this is just going to be a perfect segue for you unless you're going to do oh, Star okay. Wars last. Are you going to do Star Wars last? I can start with it. All right. You can start as Wars with it. Um, okay. and then instead of Star Wars Lando, I'm going to say where monsters lie. Number four. And this is the end of this uh, little arc here. I'm very excited about it. When I was standing in line today, uh, my comic book guy likes to ask me what I got. And I was holding this and I hate this place next to each other. And I'm like, wait a second. And I realized that uh, th it's both the same author, uh, mm. Kyle Starks. So shout out to Kyle Starks because uh, I, I haven't really followed you that closely, but apparently I've been really enjoying your stuff. So uh, yeah. Woo. Woo. Uh, good good comics i'm excited to see how that ends i'll maybe do a little wrap up on that on maybe on instagram or on here we'll see how i'm how i'm feeling about it but uh yeah just again to segue into something i know that you got i was teetering about this but i only got four so i'm like i can treat myself to a, a fifth comic yeah so i got lando uh the lando lando story lando for lando time it's a one shot yeah. it's all the, I, uh... the 40 year anniversary all that fun stuff um, my one of my goals for tomorrow, since it's May the Fourth, you know, is the may, day may of the, Star Wars. May the Fourth be with me. May may may, may the Fourth be with you. May it be with me and all of you. Um, oh. I will be trying to read as many of the Star Wars comics that I have been like stacking up as I can tomorrow. Oh, I'm gonna go to work. And that sounds like a way worse plan. But I'm also yeah. going to try to sneak in some Star Wars content. Because we last year we watched, and that wasn't a dig. I like, I was just, ah, that sounds fantastic. Let me just say, last year we watched A New Hope. <laughs> um, yeah, what are you giggling about? Just that it wasn't a dig. <laughs> I'm just, I just wanted to cover my That's tracks. Assault, because. Man. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. What, okay, so I just cut you off to tell you about what I did last year. So when do you, what do you got lined up? What's in the the pipeline for you? Uh, to read for Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I guess I'll just show because I got to decide what I want to read through. Uh, what I picked up so far. A couple of these I'm gonna have to wait on. Oh, this one. This is this is extra. Yeah, I'll have to show that at the end. Oh, uh, so I did I did me. pick up the main uh, Star Wars this week. I haven't gotten issues. I think thirty one through thirty three, maybe even back to thirty. Oh, um, but when I saw this, I just like the cover is just so fantastic, and mm -hmm. it says right there the broken saber of Skywalker. Oh, that's and uh, next next month's issue, uh, I believe, or maybe it was last month, uh, shows his lightsaber like cut on the cover, like it's been cut in half by another red lightsaber, and it looks like Darth Vader's hand. But I don't know what's going on in that series at the moment. But I uh, also I? also discovered that I have enough points on Marvel to get at least three months of Marvel Unlimited for free. There you go. So when I'm ready to do that, I will I will use those credits. Uh, but yeah, I also got credits Lando. like like Star Wars. Get it? Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also picked up Lando. Um, nice. I really wanted the cover that was just this picture and said Lando. I don't so, like that picture at all. It looks like they took a picture of uh, 
but uh but if you like it playing, he's, he's playing savat man like that's what Lando that's does. he plays but, that he plays that game he like, plays that time. game and he loses his things that he loves <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's why we don't gamble right yeah there Wait, you go there's well, some i <laughs> couldn't tell you last time i gambled but i i mean I, uh, I have I have poker nights with the buddies over yeah, here. There but... you go. You got to have poker nights and smoke cigars yeah. and have your dogs sit at the table and make them smoke cigars. And then you go to jail for animal. And then all of a sudden it's just your dog sitting around the table <laughs> with his dog friends. And they took over the game. And... <laughs> Anywho, you lose your table. The dog's been. Yeah. Friends. It doesn't belong to him. Your it's dog wastes away all of your money going in on a seven two, not suited. <laughs> oh, boy. What else you got? Uh, I got Star Wars The High Republic Adventures from uh, Dark Horse. This is the Nameless Terror number three. I actually read uh, the issue before this last night, so it's pretty fresh. So I'll definitely be reading that one tomorrow. Nice. Uh, then the mainline Star Wars High Republic Adventures, uh, also from Dark Horse. And last but not least, this is something I have been saving up for tomorrow because uh, I think I've only read the first two issues, uh, but issue seven of Star Wars Yoda. Oh, that looks pretty so, sweet. So I'm planning on having a Yoda day tomorrow to start. Oh, I'm so bummed. I want to do that. What can I do? Maybe I'll try to. I'm trying to think if I have any comics <laughs> um, that I Star Wars comics. I want to read. I have the Lando one, obviously, but yeah, uh, I'll have to look. Um, but I, I also still have yet to read the Ewoks one. Dog smoking and playing <laughs> poker together. Speaking of dog smoking and playing poker together, I bet I would be a gambling man that those Ewoks they sit and smoke cigars and are, are they too wholesome? You tell you read this comic and then you get back to me and and you, you I let me know if you think that those cr uh, critters would smoke I guess, cigars. I guess uh, after I get through Yoda, I will attempt to because I don't know what point in the day I'll be, but the next thing I will attack is these little one shots here. So Ewoks and Lando. Nice. That sounds. Here we are planning out my reading list for tomorrow on the order. This is great. Hey, that sounds um, fun. What else you get? Uh, this was also kind of a big deal to pick up. I saw it um, from uh, Midtown Comics on one of their posts yesterday because, you know, uh, I think DC actually comes out on Tuesday. Do they? I think so. Um, or like at least some. Um, but there's a guy who went and picked this up, rolled it up and put it in his back pocket. And it's on know. video of this guy in Midtown doing it. But it was also like he already had another issue on order that he was already sending off to CGC yeah, uh, or one of those grading places. But it's the Legacy 900. It's Batman 135. Wow. So this is just the main cover. I looked uh, I've been getting the like the sketch ones. Yeah. Um, and they had one of those there today, but I thought I should go with this one since it's kind of a, it's got a big deal attached to it being the 900th issue of the legacy of Batman, which is that's wild. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I picked this one up cause, uh, I'll get back to this later, but it's a DC black label and it's a uh, peacemaker tries hard. Ah oh, man, I saw a bunch of other people got this and I'm like, and I, I didn't think when I was at the, my store about it, you know, and I was yeah. even looking at the DC rack too. And yeah. I didn't, I guess it didn't cross my mind. I'm bummed. It looks, I mean, I don't, I say it looks fun, but I, yeah. I don't know anything, but it's, I'm sure it'll be a good time. But there's some, there's something from DC black label. I'm going to talk about later that I, Ooh. I read and I, I haven't really shown much of. So, um, let's not spoil any of it. Uh, next up, you're going to be glad I got this. If you I want. am glad I, already yeah. just because you, yeah. you Stark spaces, wildfire volume one. I saw that in your notes and I was like, Mark hasn't been reading this. And then, oh, that's awesome. That's a beautiful yeah. trade paperback. Can you lift that up again? Yeah. yeah, yeah. For, uh, the video. Wow. Can you show me the back? You, things look better at the back, like baseball cards. Um, yeah, yeah that's, that's you pretty see the, cool. the opening, the inside cover. Look at that. Yeah. Man, Hayden Sherman, I yeah, love you so I'm, much. Uh, I'm excited to get into this. Uh, You'll really enjoy and, that. And last but not well, not well, last but not least of my polls, uh, Boom Studios issue five of number five, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles two. That looks dope. Are the Ninja yeah. Turtles in like Power Ranger suits on the cover there? Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. Uh, 
I mean, it happen it kind of happens in the first volume too, in uh number one. Yeah, but uh, I didn't see it then. I saw it now. And then uh about right before I left to go pick up my kiddos from school, uh the library uh brought me something and I haven't had something from the library in a little bit. The library and, delivers? Yeah. Wow. It started it started during COVID. I was gonna um, say Oregon's paradise. I'm gonna come back. <laughs> um but yeah, it's volume one. It's called uh Past Mistakes. And it's uh Chip Zdarsky. Oh public domain. Oh volume look one. at that. That's yeah. beautiful too. I thought yeah. you were gonna I uh this past is, uh, mistakes. This is... is that what that arc's called? Interesting. Uh, yeah. Um I didn't know that. No, I was I was surprised by I mean it's new, but like I'm probably the third person to read it from yeah. the library. Um maybe so cool. maybe five. Um, I need to go to my library. I've never done it once. But yeah, I'm a uh, I'm excited to get into this because I know you and a lot of the other pals had really talked it up. So it's a, it's a good wholesome thing. You'll relate as a family man. Me as a as a man in my early 30s without a child, I only know depression. I have no fulfillment in my life. Um, but anyways, <laughs> comics fill that void. And uh, <laughs> do you want to get into some comics? I'm joking. Yeah. No, not about the let's not. The let's, things. let's talk about like family stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not uh, do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, so what did, what did you get into this last week? Well, do you, do you want to start with the ones we're both going to talk about? Or do you want to do individual ones? You know, we should go that route. It's a good route to go. Which uh, I gave you two <laughs> options. And... I did. And <laughs> you weren't, you were like super excited about one of them. So let's, let's start there. Where? I wasn't. I'm not super excited about it either, but blue book number three. Okay. Yeah. It that was, is... uh, it, yeah. What, what, let, 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 let's hear what you have to say. I really, I don't have much to say other than like, it's just an interesting form of storytelling. Um, mm -hmm. just a quick recap. If you haven't been following blue book is about the story of Betty and Barty Ross. And they read about it all over Wikipedia. Like yeah. The, the, the government documents about it are like released to the public. So you can, you can read the story. Right. Or you could read it in blue book. Yeah. And honestly, that would be the best way to consume it. Um, but, uh, I mean, as far as I know, um, yeah, I, yeah, but like, again, I think I would enjoy this more as a, um, just a trade paperback. I think of just being able to plow through it and just see it because it's, it's the story again, the storytelling so interesting because it's just narrating of like what their experience was like afterwards. So there's, you're not, you're, it's just all story. There's no kind of like drama mm. being played out in front of you. It's just yeah. pure narration with pictures going along, which is what a comic book is. But it's like, there's it, the dialogue isn't like, you're not, it's all focused around that narrative and that kind of thing going forward. Um, Oh, let's see what Andy has to say about Blue Book. Hi, guys. I like the main story of Blue Book 3, but the second story was not good. I didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, well, and we'll get to that second part. Honestly, I don't even think I read it. Like, because I don't even like I I in my head, I don't remember that this book has uh, a, like a ending like that. Yeah. So I uh, I always skip it. I skipped it on the last one, too. Um, well then I'll, we'll just talk knock, about... we'll just knock that one out. I I didn't I didn't care for it. Um I still think like the first one from the first issue which took place at um man what's it called the like the theme park place Oh, of, Coney yeah, Island? Coney, Coney like Island, yeah. Yeah. Takes place in Coney Island. Like these are like real stories or at least like legends or myths or of some kind or there's some truth to them. Mm -hmm. And the first one was great just because it's like it kind of made you think, at least for me, like we're going to get like cool random bits because this is a story that takes place in America. It's it's, you know, as far as I understand it, like UFOs is like a, a thing. Most America, like not most Americans, but like I think that the per capita percentage is probably higher mm -hmm. than in other countries over UFOs. And so I was like, cool, this takes place in America. The second story takes place in America. It's a weird like legend uh that's part of our history like i like that the second one took place in like england i'm like i can't relate to that because that's the not third like, one 
no the no, second, the second one? The one yeah okay so I, i'm saying i really like the first one the second one i just did not care for and this third one again i i didn't care for like i'd rather see more like america american like myth told in that second mm. story rather yeah. than jumping around because it's already you're already in america with the story you're reading before and i hate jumping out to a different is there any consistency uh i mean they're all like horror myth, stuff like like yeah. a myth of some kind right like okay i mean yeah yeah okay i mean that sounds cool but i just i just keep forgetting it's there that's yeah. like it's a good treat and i enjoy those things i just for some reason with blue book it doesn't like register in my head that that's at it's there yeah but like for me back to like the main story i appreciated just getting like this story about um uh what betty betty and, betty and barney betty and barney so just like barney seeing his therapist and going under hypnosis and he details like the things that he sees and he, they're trying to draw his memories from said abdu abduction and yeah all uh andy said it best there the yeah, second the stories one. are all random lore i wish it was all american ufo encrypted stories yeah so like that that's what i mean like yeah if it would be really cool if it was um, like more American stories. Yeah. I, I'm not trying to also not dig on other like sure. the lore of other no, countries. No, it's understandable. But it's, it'd just, be fun to learn about the stuff where you're from. Yeah. And, but yeah, so like the main story, like I appreciated like the piece that it was, but it was not my favorite of this, the series so far. Yeah. Um, I like that it did. Cause like Barney's so much more like reserved as the story tells it than betty mm -hmm. is and i'm so like if the next issue is the same thing but from like betty with i don't know maybe a few other things like thrown in to help build the story like like in the bigger picture not just like in betty's but if we still got betty going and seeing this hypnosis and like detailing her side of the stories it'll be cool like i'm excited to like see that because she's the one that's been more outspoken about mm. their situation their shared their shared experience right um so yeah like i like and i also just like this series overall just because it is a piece it is retelling a piece of history um yeah. whether or not you subscribe to believing it or not like i don't care it's it's great story and mm. so like i i do like blue book and i think that like tinian's doing a great job with it but it is a little off from like his exciting series like something's killing mm -hmm. the children and all those like house of slaughter variants right yeah yeah uh i'm definitely gonna be sticking on it at least for the first arc you know i don't know how long yeah. they plan on going but that's that's my plan yeah um but yeah like so yeah i'm i'm enjoying the series didn't really care for this issue as much as i did the rest but right. still found things to appreciate about it um but something that I'm going to go ahead and just call it this because it is for me. It's my banger of the week. Oh, wow. This is yeah. this is like your one of your first bangers of the week. That's just like your first or second. Yeah, dude. I'm, you know, I'm trying to time them, you know, <laughs> just, just right. <laughs> Got to leave wish... people wondering, like, when's when's it's it's like when your favorite like batter goes up to the home plate and he's known for like hitting home runs and you're like, is he going to do it? Is he going to hit it out of the park? Like, that's what I'm doing with my bangers of the week. You, you know what I, I i'm not gonna say that it's my banger of the week but it's yeah it's 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 definitely up there it was, this is for me this is where this i think the hooks came in i was enjoying oh, yeah. it in issue like one and two but this one i was like oh this is like a lot of fun this is gonna be mm -hmm. like a fun time because this got this main character of uh jack uh whatever his last name is yeah um, cross uh, Cross. is it really jack cross yeah i guess that's yeah. cross okay wow cross jack okay wow. or no Cro cross jack is his uh yeah um yeah i mean it might be i, I know his name's jack anyways but i don't know if we said it but we're talking about local man issue oh, number three. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that everyone in the world <laughs> yeah you're talking about local man um number three and here's the truth if you didn't know what we were talking about you should because you should be reading this comic because it seems like it's like just one of those it's an image comic it's a fun one like i feel like it's just going to be one of those one of those that sticks around for a, a good bit you know yeah like i i i hope it goes um let me see i'm, I'm on the secret source right now looking at it 
I mean, it says that there's five issues coming out. I hope it goes more, honestly. Yeah, that might just um, be the first arc. But then I also begs the question, like, would a second arc spoil the first one? Well, who knows? I mean, who knows? Um, who knows? Yet, so, yet to so, be determined. So in this uh, issue, Cross Jack is continuing to look for clues into the murder of his, like, arch enemy. And um, it's just kind of taken them all over the place. Um, and honestly, like, I don't really remember much of, like, what happens within it. It was mm -hmm. mostly for me of just, like, obviously, like, the whole thing with the uh, the priest and, like, uh, the fact that, like, he told him that he met God or he, like, yelled to him that he met God at one point. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I really appreciated that. And I just thought it was funny. Um, yeah. But, yeah, like. The for me, it was just like an overall, like really fun experience. Um, I think it's mm -hmm. like it's probably going to be this is there's definitely like some comics where I read and it just like washes over me, you know, yeah. like I just enjoy the experience. I don't really take it in too much. Um, mm -hmm. And this is what like issue one and two were kind of feeling like for me. But now that it, like the talons are in, I feel like I mm -hmm. need to start like paying more attention. How do you yeah. feel about it? Oh, man, I'm I'm loving this series. It's it's contender for like my favorite series going on right now. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, I think I, I was talking with Ray about it. And like, I think Ray said that it is his favorite series out right now. I think so. Um, but it's just been the storytelling just been all all like rise. Uh, mm -hmm. Just just keeps taking you up to the next level. And I'm just I'm just really enjoying it. And I also love how there's the companion story as a flip comic where you get a shorter story of something that was mentioned like in the main story. Right. Or like um, something. And you're just, yeah. And you're just getting like a few pages and panels of, of that story. See, I have been reading those. I think part of it is because I like the, so when you get this comic, I actually have it on my desk somewhere. Um, it has right, right here. I think. Is it up? Ah, uh, there it is. So it has like, this cover which is um oh do you you have a different cover than me that's a dope no this is, this is flip yours or isn't yours what's yours on the back yeah so that one's that so that's what oh, i was gonna yeah, say yeah, yeah yeah isn't this the main cover i thought these were the main ones no i believe that's the i think that that is i believe this is the main cover and you oh, have really cover b. yeah well then i have the better cover Oh yeah, yeah. this cover B. I um, uh, I don't have the I, better cover. I like that more, but I really like this concept of seeing like the comic book on the table and also like what I imagine the comic in the back is, is what I was gonna say. Yeah, and it also gives off like a lot of what Marvel does, especially like with the She Hulk covers, where it's like, you know, the eighties issue number one says, like, you guys better buy my series or I'm gonna tear up your X-Men comics. <laughs> and then yeah. issue issue sixty it's she's holding up some like x or some she hulk comics i think and she's like all right boys give me your x-men comics because it's the final issue there you go yeah and so like i kind of like that that aspect of it on those covers i remember seeing uh issue one's version of that when i got the first one and i like mm -hmm. debated i'm like should i get the main cover or should i get this very i think i've just been getting these um that's, that's cool i mean even that like that's why i said like um i'll keep i'll keep getting the mains there you go and i'll keep getting them one day when we merge them in a um uh storage unit somewhere in the midwest uh they'll be sitting there together yeah um but yeah so like the little uh blurb on this one though is the hero formerly known as cross jack is on the manhunt for a murder a trail that leads him directly to a self-help guru who was once his sworn enemy, the villain known as Frightside. Now, the local man must find out what she knows before his high school sweetheart's cop husband throws him in a cell. Meanwhile, in the past, Crossjack and Neon battle demons and angels, both real and psychological, at the end of the world. Yeah. Um, and there was just some really just key moments in this story especially with fright side because like mm. you you kind of got glimpses of fright side in the opening panels um mm -hmm. but then it comes to like the present day and she's a part of the story and she's in town for a book signing but it was to come check on uh cross jack's old nemesis who was also from the same podunk town 
mm-hmm. uh, who is the person who was murdered that cross Jack is now chasing after the murder of this former right. enemy of his. And yeah. And so like fright sides, like part of the story too, um, was just like really exciting and surprising. And, uh, I, I don't know, like she made a hard choice at the end. I'll just say that. There you go. That's yeah. a good way to put it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't really have anything else to say other than uh, you should be reading this comic. You should. And if you are not and you don't want to bother dealing with uh, collecting the single issues, the trade paperback for volume one comes out September 20th. So you got some time to think on that. But yeah, you you sit in your room and you think about what comics you want to read, which is, <laughs> I mean, pretty much just what I'm doing right now. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what else did you right. get into this week? Well, Bunny, my pal, I I feel like I've been waiting for like this time, this day for like so long. But oh, um, yeah. you I've, have. I've, you've been you, you're real jazzed. I am real jazzed. I mean, I I I guess I could say this is my banger of the week. Uh, Behold, Behemoth number five. But I, it's just my banger series. Like, Mm -hmm. legitimately, I want to say this just right at the top of the review. This has been my favorite comic that I have read this year. Insofar as, like, the art is top-notch. Like, it is, like, next-level art. The storytelling is phenomenal. The pace that it does with it and the way that it uh, interweaves the past and the present and through those narratives, like, builds on top of each other and, like, climaxes like both of those stories like in a way that the the story in the future finishes kind of the arc but the story in the present sets up the second arc that there's gonna be Mm. and like even i mean there is also set up in like the future but like it's just like like chef's kiss storytelling (laughs) like top notch man and i actually wrote um Tate rumbled today on Instagram and just was like, Hey, I've read through this series twice so far. Um, since it's been, you know, it just came out last week. I I read it and then I went back and reread the first couple issues digitally because I the art in this is so good. I just love looking at it on a uh com- like on a laptop screen because it just like really shines through or not a laptop screen, my tablet screen, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like, I honestly, like definitely get yourself the trade paper bank because I'm sure that'll be beautiful, but on mm-hmm. like, you should probably I, also want to get it digitally. I, I have it on my pull list for uh, August 9th. <laughs> nice. There you go. But okay. Um, so let me, but yeah. So you're saying though, like, still get it digitally like now like just go ahead and buy them and read the let story me, yeah like it's then, such a good yeah. story dude um let me try to like explain a bit of what it's about okay because i feel like most of the time when i talk about this comic i'm just like this is just such a good comic you know that's pretty much what i feel like that's the only thing that i say of yeah. just being like i'm just enjoying this and the reality is is like it took me a while to like figure out what this comic was about and like what what i was seeing you know yeah um okay so we open it it's on uh grayson i i know i've talked about this before in the in the past so i'm gonna try to you know brief summaries um Mm -hmm. we open on grayson he's at his brother's funeral um and when after as his brother's being lowered into the grave uh, he's joined by Kavita. He was uh, his brother. His brother's name is Liam. It's Liam's partner. So the story is kind of revolving around those two characters and as well as this little girl named Ren. So Ren is an orphan. She's living in a foster home and uh, Grayson, or as he just goes by Gray. Gray mm-hmm. is, Makes I, sense. Um, he's a, there you go. He's a social worker. So uh, he came by to inspect the house and he noticed that she had a black eye so he had to report her um you know it just became a whole or to report the parents and then that night a tree falls on the house and kills everybody in the house besides Ren. 
and it's not very clear of like what really happened there it's just like some catastrophe and then so they take um uh ren to protective custody and then she um she has a she freaks out there and uh, this giant monster comes out of her and it destroys this police station and kills everybody inside of it and then so i'm kind of spoiling some things but that's it's early on in the story and then it sets up where most of the um like the few the past stuff takes place is just in um gray's apartment where he's talking with kavita about what is what is happening here mm -hmm. so she explains to him that in the past uh the gods used to walk around on earth but when man started mankind uh when human beings started to become conscious of their surroundings they decided that their like presence would be too much for them to like comprehend so they just left behind them uh like stories and myths and mm -hmm. then uh but they also left behind to kind of like do the work of like keep it, keeping the darkness at bay these things called behemoths and behemoths kind of live like in the shadows of everything and they can only come through a uh a, what is called a scourge and a scourge uh is like kind of like the outlet for it but then the shepherd on the other hand is the like the rudder for it of pointing it in the right direction so it's not just like a a mindless monster hmm. um and then the shepherd also gets a touch of heaven so it gets like a like he gets superpowers essentially um so it's it's going cutting back and forth between these two stories in the past and in the future. And in the future, you see um, uh, Grayson and Ren are on this. They're on their way to this place called the Hidden Place. And mm -hmm. they're trying to. Yeah, trying. They, they're getting there for a reason that they don't really explain it. Mm -hmm. um, but you do find out that the behemoth that is inside of. Well, actually, you know what? I don't want to spoil it. I feel yeah, like, I don't, yeah, that's I'm I think. I, th I, I think I think you got I think you left a good cliffhanger and like I think I'm gonna um, leave it there because I feel yeah. like I go farther, but like it's just such a good story. And I think for me, part of the reason that I really enjoyed it was the fact that I was just like, what is happening? And I really love those stories, and especially when they do come together and not like a like a weird cliffhanger kind of way, but like in just like a good it was just a great ending. And we've talked about it before. Endings are mm -hmm. really, really hard to do. Yeah. So yeah, and I, uh, did you did you say it had a, a like kind of the vibes of uh something that's coming with children a little bit yeah um, um I, so he the same writer he's done the third arc of house of slaughter okay. as well well he was nice. the he's the credited writer james tinian still the story credit but the right. writer is tate so yeah um, but that that's pretty cool yeah, I definitely I mean, I I'm, like I say, I definitely recommend checking out. It's like my favorite series. Sorry if I said too much, but I feel like it's just like it's again, like it was just a lot to take in. But the mm -hmm. story, the way that it wove together and like it was just again, like just for me, like perfection. I, I really can't think of anything other than nothing like I, I can't think of any complaints um, and I wanted to say this, like I mentioned, I alluded to it earlier that this is the first volume. Um, mm -hmm. There is going to be more. So this is exciting. Oh, you know, I'm, right I'm looking for something that's ongoing. And also I wanted to just make a little caveat on that and say, uh, I realized that that Texas blood is an ongoing series. And that's also like my favorite comic as well. So mm -hmm. um, I do have ongoing, but that feels more like an anthology series because the timeline changes, or not the timeline, the time frame changes every yeah, part. Yeah, yeah but anyways i've been talking for far too long <laughs> um i'm gonna pass the back over to you you should everyone get on behold behemoth <laughs> uh yeah so one of the things i read this week that i really appreciated it was an issue one from uh called deep cuts right yeah um i was curious about this yeah um it's it's it is like an it is i think anthological so i think there's four issues in total but they're all different point in the history of jazz that's pretty cool and so this first story uh takes place in uh new orleans i believe and this boy here on the covers i apologize i can't remember the character's name uh he's an aspiring musician he has a clarinet that used to be his father's his father had passed away um but in like all he's ever loved is music. Uh, he gets a job working in a whorehouse because of this guy. Um, 
who trumpet man yeah and uh then there's also this like alluded to character named uh i think johnny two fingers something like johnny that who is his rival the tr- it's, okay. he's a trumpet rival and he plays his trumpet with just two fingers oh, and and so have at least three yeah and so this trumpet player here on the cover who's i apologize to everybody i i didn't write down their names um he kind of like i don't know he's kind of force training like kind of trying to set this kid up at his own gain mm-hmm. rather than the kid's gain mm-hmm. and that's why he ends up like playing at a whorehouse but then he also plays i, I don't need all the cover up anymore i don't think um <laughs> uh but the other person who plays there is this pianist who's known as the professor and uh this is another thing that the kind of jerk guy uh helps this kid out with is like yeah he connected him with like the music professor and uh he's like you'll learn a thing or two from this guy and so like there's a part of the story that um like you see this bond growing between these two people Mm -hmm. which it's like really cool to see that it's like uh um james earl jones in the sandlot type character Okay, I've never seen that, but I know you, who James Earl Jones is. Sorry. You've never seen The Sandlot? <laughs> no, sorry. That's um, all right. You're not really a baseball guy, and that's it. I think you're just <laughs> not a baseball guy. I like um, movies. There's yeah. just so many movies and so yeah. many songs. My mom gives me that same face whenever she like asks me if I've heard of like the Ballad of the uh, Fort of Starvel. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I've never heard of that song. She's like, you've never heard of the Ballad of the Fort of Starvel. <laughs> and I'm like, no, because it's a song I just made up. <laughs> but there's just so many things. And it's not there a surprise. Is. There to me. Is. Well, if you're ever looking for a good like, I, d- I don't think it's Disney, but I think it's on Disney Plus because I think sure. Fox maybe made it. But they own everything. Anyways, too. I think yeah, I think you can watch it on Disney Plus. Uh, maybe and I do like baseball. Amazon. We've talked about that on the podcast that I I'm I like baseball. I'm just scared of getting smacked in the side of the head with a ball. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just like if you're ever in the mood, it's worth the watch. Um, but yeah, then there's just this other story with uh, I think her name's Dixie this okay. uh this gal that works at the the brothel we'll just call it that from now on yeah. uh and uh she like really likes the kid but like in a big sistery way so there's also that relationship the kid ends up writing like a song and naming it after her but she's like nah you can't like call it that and they come up with like another name for it that's really cool mm-hmm. um and then like again it gets to this point where the the forced mentor guy the trumpet player uh he like ditches the kid because he like sees greater fame and doing something else mm. um which really was his demise mm. and the guy that was alluded to johnny two fingers shows up and then makes this guy also a two-fingered trumpet player oh, nice. uh yeah um but like then and the- this is like based on real stuff you said i'm not sure it's based on like real time because it's okay. it's based on like the history of jazz music interesting i um, have to look into that because that's that yeah. sounds really cool especially if they're going to be jumping through things that kind of sounds like a little bit like well animal. and like i think i think issue two is about uh, a gal in broadway okay that's... um yeah so like the the whole series looks pretty cool i think i asked my shop to start pulling it for me if i didn't i'm going to regret it um but i really like deep cuts it was a the art is fantastic too like the cover is very telling of the Mm -hmm. art but the art inside is just so much better is it similar Um, oh it's better than that that's mm, i should have picked it up i regretted it just like peace well just i mean like a good cover should tell what's inside right yeah i agree okay but good art inside should also help like tell the story and Mm -hmm. like the variations of colors used the way lines and shading are are done like this 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 series so far has just done very well in that and i think it's also rotating artists Mm -hmm. um like or like there's a rotating team to it like there's one person behind it and then uh the other job is like kicked out to somebody else okay um but yeah uh i really liked it um yeah I'm, i'm gonna if I haven't asked my shop to get it, which I probably should, uh, I'm going to be looking out for issue two. Nice. Yeah, there you go. You got it. You got something else you wanted to talk about today? 
Yeah, you know what? I will say, uh, yeah, because a lot of the other things I, I got, I was just kind of casual reading. So I will talk about this. The uh, the Wasp wrapped up with uh, issue number four, uh, good old four issue arc. And man, I I really enjoyed this story. You know, it's my favorite thing about Marvel. Yeah, I'm just like, what is that? Just these fun, like, superhero stories, you know, where mm. it's just, like, a girl with shrinking powers. Two girls. So, it's it, the story follows uh, Janet Van Dyme and, oh, no, I forget her. Um, oh, it's a Russian name. What's, a, like, a, 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 it's, like, a cliche Russian name. Man. Like, Ivory Nata- or something. No. Natasha? No. It's, like, Anika? something like, it's something like that. I forget it. Oh, I feel terrible right now. Um can you fill while I look for this real quick? Sure. I'm um, on it. Just ask me some questions. Mm-hmm. I'm working on it. What issue is it? Oh, <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> nothing. Never mind. We're... No, what? The issue number. Uh, issue number four of the Wasp. I asked you to talk while I was doing what you're currently doing. <laughs> oh, I thought you were asking me to do that. Um... No, it's okay. Yeah. We're going to skip yeah. it now. Whatever <laughs> her name is, um, we will figure it out. That was uh, too much commotion for all of that. Um, Not bad. It's all good, bud. But uh, yeah, so uh, it was just a fun story of seeing these two wasps. The second wasp is the um, like the illegitimate daughter of Hank Pym and like a Russian something or other. Yeah. And yeah, Hank yeah. Pym is absent at the moment. I think he's merged with Ultron off in the void somewhere. And so it's just following these two wasps as they just kind of like go around and and kind of really figure out what does it mean to be a wasp and going through like the history of that's you know very similar to the ant-man thing whereas but the ant-man kind of has a, a little bit more of a lineage than the wasp character does so it focused more on the relationship between the two um and it also uh, harkens back to the first appearance of the wasp dealing with um, a creature that shows up in that comic dealing with the death of her father and it's so it's so cool because it's interesting to like you know in those early comics they introduce the character they can just kind of throw away that they're like oh like this is her father he's dead now because Mm -hmm. they didn't probably really think like in longevity's terms you know um but yeah it it was cool to see them go back to that same story to same back to that same um well and like to kind of expand on that and even just use it to tell more of the story that they were telling in the in the current thing it was very enjoyable um yeah so i definitely um yeah i definitely recommend picking that up if you have marble and li- marble if you have marble unlimited and you made a marble joke That's, in our post I, I did but it was a play on the thing that you just did wow it was a, it, you know wow lose we did your marble it. lose your marvels uh, my marbles um yeah but that's that's all i have to say about that it was it was a very enjoyable story do you got any other ones you want to um yeah yeah so i had a you know there's there's a lot that we could keep talking about but um one thing i did want to talk about was our our pal eric who uh i think we may have overlooked his yeah, comment, we, i've back, been waiting to pull that up Public yeah domain is so killer it is back very killer. referencing yeah so i'm i'm really excited to get into that eric uh, but something that Eric recommended I get into, and I did, uh, was Swamp Thing, Green Hell. Ooh. Yeah. And uh, so this is, a, this is a Lemire work. So Jeff Lemire wrote yep. this. Uh, the art was done. Hold on here. Um, my bad. Uh, I, I got this. Do you want me to look at it? Can't you just look at the cover? Who's what is it? Say okay, it's uh, no, I just I'm, I was uh, at a different spot in my notes and uh-huh. I need to scroll. Um, but yeah, so the artist is uh, Doug Mankey, uh, colorist David Barron, and letterer Steve Wands. Um, this this is honestly like my first memorable experience, I think, with Black Label. I think I've picked up like issues of DC Black Label before, but not like in sequence, just that mm. like there was a cool story to it. So I picked up that issue and read it, or it was like recommended in like the DC app or something like that. And, uh, but yeah, I've never like just gone through with a DC black label before. And this one's finished. It was just three issues. (laughs) Um, and yeah, these covers are amazing. I got two of the variant covers, which I ordered these from coffee and a comic, by the way, uh, 
This is a variant cover for issue one. That looks so cool. This is issue two. That's and then cool unfortunately too. he was sold out of this variance of issue three, but I believe I got the main cover for it. That's pretty and cool. Too. There's there's a little teaser here on this one. This is Animal Woman. Ooh. Yeah, which uh Eric has mentioned to us that he loves Animal Man. And yeah. I'm actually on the lookout for uh Lemire's Animal Man because apparently he did that during the New 52 as well and I remember him doing like Green Arrow. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I've been I Eric has definitely uh got me interested on that as well. So I think maybe we'll have to have to yeah. do um And I mean these are the Animal Man. these are these are the big boys. Those those that's such a beautiful cover. Yeah. It's very uh, reminiscent of um the the Gorillas Plastic Beach um album cover for some reason yeah. that's what that's reminding me of um but like this is also too just a great example for me of like what it's like to dive into to a character like that you know about but you probably haven't read like enough if any at all of the comics about them like maybe they appeared in something like swamp thing to me like the the memory it brings up nostalgically is like i remember the tv show like it, it was like a cartoon mm -hmm. and, uh and then I also remember my neighbor getting the action figure, which like if you pressed a button on it, it like kind of like would go like weak and just become together. like spaghetti, yeah. like become like a swamp. Um, like at least <laughs> that was the idea behind it. My mom mm -hmm. didn't like swamp thing and she didn't like that. I liked swamp <laughs> thing. And so she wouldn't let me get the action figure too. Aww. And yeah. And, uh, so I think my brother and I rode bikes or maybe, maybe my brother just got it for me in secret, but I got, I got that action figure. And then I remember my mom found it and I was like grounded from it for like a week. And, <laughs> and, but then I, but then I got it back because I nice as speaking now as a parent, it's just like, sometimes just like, yeah, it's kind of really dumb. Like the point I'm trying to prove <laughs> to my child right now. <laughs> well, I mean, you did go behind your mother's back or whatever, yeah. you know? So, but, uh, uh, but yeah, the, the story is great. It's, uh, uh, the swamp thing has been dead for 10 years. So Sounds like he, good. yeah. Uh, but he's also been living in like this, this, uh, paradise, like his, I don't know, his astral form. Uh, yeah. Eric, Eric here says the reveal at the end of issue two, like legit gave him goosebumps. I I'm, I'm sure that's a reference to, animal man is his love for animal man was it or is it uh there's also but there's swamp also thing. just like another character that's in here who's who appears in issue one that's like it's really cool that he's in it i actually i don't maybe he's maybe it is the one I, man i got i just read all three of them last night so like placing what happened in which issue is a little uh jelly right now and we just got maxine i'm maxine. out of the loop yeah does that help that's that's animal woman Oh, okay. So it's okay. animal man, animal man's daughter and they are like the red, you know, like they represent the parliament's side of the red and then swamp thing represents like the parliament side of the green, like natural things. And so like why these come into play in this one. Yeah. Issue one is the reveal of Constantine. Uh, so John Constantine is in this series and his part in it is just, like what you would imagine of John Constantine. Yeah. Like it, it's just, it's perfectly written for him. Mm. Uh, and he's like older now because what's going on is like, it's kind of like, if you've seen Kevin Costner's water world. No, but I'm aware of the premise. Okay. That's essentially what seems to be going on. Like water's rising. Like at one point it says uh, the mountain name or like this, like small Island. And it was formerly known as like Istanbul, I think, or uh, Iraq, like something from the middle East. Mm. Uh, and so people like live on islands. There's this group that lives on an island. Then there's this other group that lives out on like an old oil refinery or something like that. Nice. That's and, where I uh, want to live. and so like the oil refinery, people are like the gangsters. They come and take what they want from the people on the land because like they're, they're the bad guys. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but yeah, so it just follows this beautiful story of, kind of like a father daughter story but then it also relates to swamp thing and like his daughter because like he's living he he was forced to leave a paradise uh mm. that was with it like the spirit the souls of his wife and daughter mm. uh he was by he was forced by john 
by, by Constantine. That sounds like something he yeah, would do to help save humanities. Uh, like they're being attacked by the red and the green essentially because the elementals are tired of humanity, like ruining the world. Mm. And so they're, they're attacking. Makes sense. Yeah. So like, it's always a yeah. classic uh, storyline to go back to because humans are always ruining the world. Yeah. And uh, the art is just absolutely wonderful throughout. It's there's so many just like splash pages or well, there's not a ton of these, but like when they show up when splash pages are like the ones that maybe have like another like panel up in the corner in the middle or wherever, just like a smaller one. But like the majority of the two pages you're looking at is mainly a splash page. Mm. Like the art and detail in it is just so like it's it's reminiscent of of these covers. Like oh, that's great then. Yeah. So uh that is now also along with Eric. I, it's on I recommend it. There you go. Yeah. That's sweet. I that's what we you know when we started this podcast way back when I always en envision us talking with our the people that listen and friends and pals that we made along the way and the recommendations. And yeah. uh I cannot, he said, I cannot wait for you to read Lemire's Animal Man because the connections are going to blow your freaking mind. So well done. Yeah, yeah. I, actually, I actually looked for it at my shop today, but they didn't have Lemire's Animal Man. They have, I, like, I'll i tell you where I'll look for it at. I mean, I doubt that I'll get it, but I, I this isn't a segue to anything, but I did want to bring this up. Uh, this Saturday is free comic book day, so mm -hmm. I hope everyone has a free comic book day. My comic book shop is doing a deal that is half of a long box or so a short box. And for, for $30, you can fill it up, but you have yeah. to fill it up. And like that's, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. I'm going to take advantage of that. I was there today, you know, at the shop and I was just looking through and I was just like, Oh, I cannot wait to dive in and like, just find a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm definitely going to be I'm keeping my eyes up for, um jeff lemire's animal man or just any animal man if there's anything that you it's a there's a lot of recent stuff probably within the last two years so if there's any arcs from the last two years that you think i should be reading give me a shout out and i will uh i'll i'll try to track them down like but, and i would also say for me like especially when it comes to like marvel and dc because like i'm not trying to keep up with those things i'm still trying to have my toes dipped in them but Mm -hmm. I love getting recommendations like the Swamp Thing. I mean, Andy gave me the recommendation of reading volume one of Nightwing. Like, the, I think it's most recent run. I think it's like, mm -hmm. it's like 2016. Love that. And yeah. so it's just there's there is so much to catch up on in those two worlds. And I think that's why, you know, I, I try to spend more time with like indie stuff. Well, it's nice to just have the stories, you know, like it's yeah. nice to hear like someone be like, read this because you don't want to be reading Spider-Man and having to be reading a bunch of spinoffs or like the Avengers and having to read a bunch of spinoffs. Like, it's cool to just be like, just pick up these two volumes like you'll love it, you know, yeah. it's cool. Like and again, like it's just a good story. The story like it, it should be evergreen to some degree, you know? Yeah, but um, my uh, so I'm unfortunately going to be uh at a baseball game speaking of <laughs> baseball this weekend two of them actually Unfor and so, unfortunately they're they're great well, i'm missing out on free comic book day in the oh. shop. i have to i have to be up to my brother's house at, i think by 10 in the morning Oof. which he's a, he's nearly a two-hour drive away Oof. from me and then yeah. i have to drive another about four hours up to seattle to go to a mariners baseball game so I'm excited to go, but it's also yeah. like, man, I'm missing out on a free comic book day. But I asked my shop, so I'm like, hey, like, I'm going to be gone this weekend. And uh, I was like, if I gave you guys a list of the things I'm like, I was like keeping my eye on for free comic book day, could you guys like hold some for me? And they're like, basically just said, like, theoretically, like, yeah, we can. Um, and they're going to grab whatever they can for me of whatever's left over. And like, even if they get it, because not every shop gets all the same right. free comic book days. And they even told me today, like sometimes they don't come until after free comic book. Day. <laughs> yeah. I've seen so, that happen before too, but Hey, what are you going to do? It's still such a sweet concept, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's a few, there's a few though that I'm like, I hope that I get, um, yeah, I was, I was a bit excited about them like that. If you if you use the secret source to keep track of what you're pulling, um, like they're all in my pull list, the ones that I want. So nice. is there any is there any one that like you're looking forward to? Not particularly. 
Um, I know I'm going to grab a lot of like just uh, variant covers of stuff that I like. I think that's what a lot of it's going to be is just grabbing variants. Um, yeah. But hey, man, I think, you know, we're kind of wrapping things up. I uh, There's there's a moment that everyone's been waiting for, I believe. Everybody's on the edge of their seats just wondering yeah. who won the giveaway. That, the giveaway. Last week, we announced the giveaway that we are going to be giving away the Chips, the uh, Chip Zdarsky run, not the whole thing, the first arc of Batman issues yeah. 125 to 130, I believe. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so I just want to say yeah. thanks to everybody who, you know, played along with us. A lot of got a lot of followers out of it and likes mm-hmm. and all that fun stuff. So if you're listening for the first time because of that, thank you for uh Stick coming around. along. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. But do you want to uh do you want to announce the winner? Yeah, so I think I think there was like a total of 32 at least people, maybe, maybe more. I, I don't remember the numbers, but I, I ran I ran the algorithm there you go a, a bit ago and found out that our winner is official our man, official underscore our man. Woo! Yeah, Again, that's where that's sort of... where your sound machine would be great. I know. Right now. <laughs> so yeah, so we will reach out to you about that. We'll get you know a way to con- send that to you, and um, yeah, we will we'll figure that out. But congratulations, we're definitely going to be doing more of those in the future. So um, yeah, make sure that you hang out and get a chance to get yourself some cool comics. Okay. Um, so so thanks for participating with that, everybody. But I think it's time that we. Ah, we we just rode the horse into town. I was trying to think of something funny. I went with let's skate this horse into town, make it like a skateboard. But that, I just that works. Okay, okay let's skate it into sort town. Of, I mean, it'd probably be more like a, a like a, know, dirt. Like a, a like a wagon, a wagon. Let's wagon like wheel a, this. Let's play like wagon this, wheel. Do you know that this song? horse is just riding on like just standing on top of a wagon wheel. It's well, when I've thought of it as a skateboard, I literally just pictured it like frozen and like just a, <laughs> a taxidermy hearse on like on a, a taxidermy horse on like a plank with wheels. Like that's mm-hmm. the horse skateboard, but that's not really a horse skateboard. That's just the taxidermy her- horse. Anyways, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I was trying uh, to make the horse <laughs> thing short this week, but we made it uh, we made it long. But yeah. um, yeah. What are you gonna well, say? Where? What's? I was gonna with say. Us? Well, you you can find us on all the socials. You can find us on all Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Uh, we're a lot better about some of those than others, mm-hmm. uh, but but we are there, and uh, we we make it there. We've also, uh, you know, I, I I should shout this out, but something I've been dabbling in, and Ooh. I think we, we've talked about it um, when we were on Comic Book Layer last time, but uh, just being on their Discord, mm. like that that's fun. We do need to get a Discord going. Dib's not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm still figuring out how to use like, yeah, just, the comic book layers one, but uh, yeah. my we'll kid figure tells it me out. it's 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 like Discord's not that that difficult. I just haven't spent as much time as I would like on it. But yeah, yeah uh, so you know, you might find us on Discord. That's the one social you won't find it. Well, there's probably several you won't find us on. But. <laughs> Yeah, we're probably not on. I can't think of any off the top of my head that we're not on because uh, this horse is skating out of town. Yeah, it's doing a it's... crooked grind down a, a sweet <laughs> six set outside of the middle school. Ooh, nice. <laughs> All well, right, does it? Else? Does he land it? <laughs> Let's. We'll you have to come back next week to find out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you're uh, watching, listening, please like and subscribe. If you can comment or leave a review, uh, that really help us out. But we also just enjoy. The conversation so mm-hmm. start a conversation with us yes yeah, slide uh, in our dms and be like yo what's up you read in uh yeah. ant i can't think of anything obscure and i was gonna go with ant-man but it's one of my favorite comics so yeah if it's ant-man i'm reading ant-man <laughs> uh man i feel like i'm all my cylinders are just like puttering out here on my horse skateboard yeah <laughs> well there's no better time than this to say yeah, I haven't read comics like these in years, especially Behold Behemoth. <laughs>